I'm a proud Noongar Yamaji woman. I was born to an Aboriginal Malaysian mother and my father's English. My grandmother, a Noongar woman who is heritage from Quereding, Baladon country in the southeast of WA. My actual identity, my cultural identity, is so much more important than my TV identity. And I want to take you on a bit of a journey on how important I think identity is, but how important it is for young people. I was born in a country town called Carnarvon, and growing up, we moved around quite a bit. I didn't understand the reasons why, but what I do remember is that I missed out on a huge amount of school. Now, I became very familiar with the frame or the, the term new girl, and being the new girl at a new school, making new friends, I found quite difficult, and I was bully, bullied and I was teased quite a bit. But the thing was, they made me feel different. It, different in a way that I was fairer than some of the Aboriginal kids, and they would call me a half-caste, meaning that I simply wasn't Aboriginal enough for them. We were poor, so we could only afford a second-hand uniform, meaning that the Wadjula kids, the white kids, were also reluctant to be my friend. Now, I remember feeling very confused at this time, thinking, if I wasn't Aboriginal enough and I wasn't white enough, where did I fit in this world and where did I belong? Now, growing up, my childhood was quite tough. We grew up, I grew up in an overcrowded house. Drugs and alcohol were a norm and I held a lot of responsibility. My mum's addiction to drugs was quite volatile and sometimes I remember getting really good and sometimes I remember getting really bad. And it had gotten so bad to the point where we were months removed from school and put straight into a foster home without her knowledge. Now, I'd like to say this was the first time, but it definitely wasn't the last. My dad wasn't really around, and I remember the relationship with him feeling like I was a bit of a burden or a bit of an outcast with him, feeling like he didn't really know me, he didn't really understand me. But what I do know is that he did try to provide me with stuff that I didn't have with my mum. But he missed the most important bit and the most important role was to love unconditionally, nurture and protect. I was 11 when my grandmother had a stroke in her garden. I was the one who found her and I was the one who called the ambulance. A few days after visiting my grandmother in hospital, my mother took her own life. Now, if that wasn't traumatic enough, after a tiring and exhausting day attending my mum's funeral, I fell asleep at the wake, and whilst asleep, I was sexually abused. Now, I don't remember how I processed that information or how I was feeling in that time, but what I do remember is that I found a phone book and a house phone, and I looked up my dad's name, and I found a number and dialed. My stepmother answered. I didn't tell her what had happened. I just said, could you come get, come get me? 24 hours later, my dad drove from Perth to Carnarvon, picked me up and took me. Now, I left in the middle of the night that night and I didn't say goodbye to my brothers and I pretty much left and, said, and left my home. I felt like I'd lost everything in that moment. I lost my sense of belonging, my family, my mum, and also my connection to my Aboriginality. This was when I first have ever thought of suicide. Fast forward, I was living with my dad, a white family. I should have been happy. I had no other responsibility other than to learn how to be a kid. But I was, I was mute. And for two years, I couldn't communicate with words, and I found it really difficult to use my voice. But one thing I was very vocal about was my love for sport, and sport became an outlet for me. Now, I played every possible sport you can imagine, and I was a bit of a tomboy. But AFL was my favourite, and I developed a pretty strong confidence with playing AFL. Now, I'd say confidence, but my brothers would probably say over too competitive. 
Now, AFL reminded me of being back home with my brothers, playing footy in the backyard, king of the pack, on the road, no shoes on. And I loved it. And I started to enjoy school because I loved playing footy. And, just started, and starting to enjoy school meant that I actually started to finally catch up to the level that I needed to be at. I started feeling less shame about how smart I was or how I didn't know the answer, and it kind of started to develop a confidence, and I started to come out of my shell. As I started to come out of my shell, I started to learn about culture, history, my Aboriginality, and information that I was learning and processing. Some of it was hard to read, because some of the, some of the things were experiences that mirrored my experiences at home. And this was hard, because there was so much intergenerational trauma. But in saying that, it had been like a lock, had come unlocked, and every information was restoring who I was and who I was meant to be. And I started to find myself. And I started to find passions. Now, as I was finding myself, and things started to become a little bit easier, and life was kind of on the right track, and I was enjoying school, I got kicked out of home. Age 15, I was homeless, an independent minor. I had had to take care of myself, and I remember the same feelings that I had at 11 came rushing back when I was 15. Like, why wouldn't I be loved? Why will I never be good enough? And why do I honestly just keep bouncing home to home? Now, I nearly dropped out of school. And saving grace, a saviour, a teacher, showed genuine concern about me being homeless. And she took me in. Now, she didn't just give me a roof over my head. She actually gave me consistent encouragement and support that I'd never, ever had before. She taught me about values, the value of respecting yourself and the values of respecting others. She taught me and showed me what hard work looked like and the responsibility I had as an Aboriginal woman but as an older sister. And things started to change for me. I felt self-determined because someone actually believed in me. I'll fast forward that journey after a lot of therapy and a lot of tears and a lot of rotating psychologists. I now currently work with youth. Now, youth that have been in care, youth that have also suffered from abuse, grief or loss, and some that have also come from toxic home environments. And working with youth, I've read statistics that tell us that some young Aboriginal youth will, come, will become homeless, they won't finish school, and they'll become incarcerated or in the criminal justice system. And this struck a nerve with me because of my own experiences. But what hurt more was to hear a statistic that says suicide is the leading cause of death in young people. How do we turn a blind eye to that? And how do we help more young people? I believe that it starts with restoring their identity. It starts with helping them gain strength and resilience in where they belong or where they fit into this world. Because once upon a time, I was told I wouldn't make it, and I could have been one of those statistics. I was given names, titles, I was called a bung, I was called a half-caste, I was even called too pretty to be Aboriginal. And that is not a compliment, by the way, that is a completely naive and racist comment. But I am not any of that. Because I am powerful, and my story is powerful. I'm resilient, and I'm worthy. I have a voice, and I want young people to find theirs. Because I believe that young people need to see the true potential that they have. Now, young people describe this feeling to me 
a feeling that I'm very familiar with, a feeling that they feel like they've been stripped of their culture, their belonging. They have no control over the way that they live or how they were brought up. But the thing is, these young people do, and we need to encourage them. They have a voice, and we need to encourage them to use it. And what I learnt is that circumstances don't have to define your identity. Because when I look back and I reflect on my circumstances and where I was at, my career growing up, being on TV, they don't reflect what I have now. Now, I really enjoy working with young people and I love seeing the growth in them. But there has to be a point where there's a meaningful relationship in their lives. You have to set the expectation and the standard of yourself. Full stop. Are you introducing yourself as your actual identity or something that has been established for you? Because it's funny, because I could have easily done this with The Bachelor, right? I could have easily sold out, classified myself as an influencer, and yay, all this free stuff that I can endorse. But was that really all I expected of myself? And is that what I've been through to get to? No. Had I worked so hard with youth and helping them and restoring their identity, to then go on a TV reality show for them to classify me into something that I'm not? No. Does a blue tick mean that I'm more important than you and that it needs to verify that I'm an actual human being that has opinions on things that are important to me and my culture? No. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm super appreciative of this platform because it allows me to share messages to young youth about identity and share messages that are important to me. But please don't call me an influencer. I'm an influencer every day, but as a youth worker, I positively influence young people's lives. I'm simply not just an influencer. Your circumstances don't have to define your identity. They don't need to dictate what your future looks like at all. You can be whoever you want to be, and you can achieve what you want to achieve. I realised that I was just a young girl who didn't know how to read or write. I was a young girl who had to repeat years of schooling. I was a young girl who didn't have the confidence to use my voice and even talk. And look, Mum, here I am. But I'll leave you with one message. When you next introduce yourself to someone, ask yourself, is this who I am? And is this who I want to be known for? Because my circumstances didn't, I envisioned a life beyond my circumstances. Because I realized that identity is much more important. Be strong with who you are and what you were putting out. And don't let someone's opinions, anyone's opinions, become your reality, even with reality shows. Reclaim back your identity, restore your identity, stay focused, stay passionate, and stay deadly. Thank you.